almost exactly three years ago I uploaded my very first YouTube video here on this channel, which was my analog film camera collection of 2020. And a lot has happened since then. Some cameras joined, some cameras left and some cameras stayed the same. So I thought that after all these years it's finally time for an updated version. Also, the question of the questions remains, did my camera collection actually slim down or maybe even gain some weight over the course of the last few years? And since this is my three year anniversary video, I also decided to prepare something special. So I have a big announcement to make that I've been working on in the background over the course of the last months. So definitely stay tuned for that. This video will actually be divided in different sections depending on the camera types we're talking about. So today we will talk about all of my point and shoot cameras, all of my 35mm SLR cameras, my rangefinder cameras, my medium format and bigger cameras, as well as all of my instant cameras and a category that I would call more exotic cameras. Further, I also decided to include some sort of usage counter uh, ranging from zero film rolls to five film rolls, which will kind of show how often I really get to shoot a camera. Zero film rolls meaning that I basically never shot with this camera before and five film rolls meaning that I'm pretty much using this one 24 seven. To illustrate if my camera collection is simply just that, just a collection, or if I really get to shoot with it. So let's start with point and shoot cameras first and simultaneously also one of my favorite cameras ever which is this one here, the Yashica T4. It's a very small and very compact point and shoot camera with a 35mm f3.5 card size lens which is very very sharp and delivers beautiful image quality. This camera basically never lets me down. I really can't remember of many shots where the autofocus didn't catch properly and I actually got this in a, a camera trade some years ago and it has been very reliable ever since. The only thing I noticed is that that, you know, every couple of times, not very regularly, not very often, the lens doesn't retract all the way, which I hope is not a bad sign. I hope that this will remain, you know, alive for a little bit longer because I love it so much. Yeah, and this is basically the camera that I carry with me every day. So I would definitely rate this a solid five out of five film rolls when it comes to usage. And next we have this camera here, which is the Olympus AF10 Super, which is kind of my secondary or my backup point and shoot camera, which I actually found on a flea market in Munich for five euros a couple of years ago. And no, this is not a granny days reference, but I really found it for five euros. And I think it's a great camera if you are looking for something more budget friendly in comparison to the T4. And to be honest, I think it's not too far behind when it comes to image quality as well. But I found myself using it for very specific specific situations, uh, usually situations where I wouldn't feel comfortable carrying around a very expensive point and shoot camera. So this is the camera that I usually bring to parties, to concerts, to festivals, all those situations where, you know, it being stolen or being broken are more likely, which wouldn't hurt so much if it's not such an expensive camera. So it's really great, but I feel like for me it's still a little bit in the shadows of the T4 because I simply like the rendition of the T4 lens a little bit more. And yeah, because I simply use it for very de dedicated situations, I would rate this probably around two out of five film rolls when it comes to usage. And the last point and shoot camera I own is this one here, which is the Canon Prima Sol, which I actually introduced to you a couple of episodes uh, before on my recent photography pickup series. And this one is a rather special camera because it is powered by a solar panel. Sadly, however, this camera already seemed to have died on me. I was on my third roll with this when it suddenly didn't retract the lens anymore and I wasn't um, capable of firing and it showed me that the battery on this is empty. And sadly, because you have the solar panel, there isn't a way to put regular batteries in this. So I'm not sure if this will, you know, be back to life again. I will definitely sunbath with it once the sun is out here in Germany again. But for now, since I only had the chance to shoot two and a half rolls with it, I sadly also have to give it two and a half film rolls when it comes to my usage experience so far. And next we have 35 mm SLR cameras and first in line here is the Nikon F3 
which is probably one of the most iconic film cameras in general with the kind of boxy Italian design and the red stripe which kind of made history in a way and I used to own several uh, Nikon F3s but I traded them away so I'm only left with one Nikon F3 buddy and what I really love about this camera is that it's modular so you have interchangeable viewfinders you can use the eye level viewfinder or also a waist level viewfinder which is rather unique when it comes to 35 millimeter cameras but over time I realized that I'm not such a big SLR user in general but I kind of prefer rangefinder cameras for many situations so I sadly have to give this three out of five film rolls and here we have the Canon A1 another classic camera that I used to shoot with a lot a couple of years ago and what I really like about this one is that you can set all the settings manually but you can also if you want to set some of the settings to auto which makes this one a very great camera for beginners but also a camera that you can simply pass to friends who want to take a couple of pictures as well but don't really know what they're doing so this one has a very special place in my heart because I used to shoot some of my very first projects with it however in the last years I really didn't get to shoot with it a lot so sadly I will have to give this only one out of five film rolls when it comes to my usage but I also have to say that the Nikon F3 and the Canon A1 will probably remain in my camera collection forever because they simply have the greatest and broadest uh, lens selection so I think it's kind of nifty and handy to have a Canon and a Nikon buddy in the collection just in case there are some cool lenses you come around and you want to shoot with. And I still own this one here, the very first film camera I ever bought, which is the Pentax MX, which I bought back when I was still in high school and I didn't get caught by the film bug yet. I must have been 15 or 16 maybe. And I remember quite vividly that this probably must have been when film was at its lowest because the seller at the flea market kind of begged me to please buy this for seven euros because he really didn't want to bring it back home. So yeah, times have changed quite a bit. But sadly, the body and the lens are in a rather rough condition and very hard to operate, which is why I haven't used it at all in the last couple of years. So I'm pretty much keeping this for nostalgic reasons. So sadly, it's zero out of five film rolls. So next is the camera that actually infected me with film photography and that started this whole ripple of getting into gas and collecting cameras, which is this one here, the Konica Auto Reflex TC. And I've told the story before, but long story short, I was living abroad for a while and I joined a local photography club, but little did I know that it was in fact an analog photography club and that the majority of members were actually shooting film, but I wasn't and I didn't have my Pentax MX with me when I was living abroad. So the next day after the meeting, I ran into all of the thrift shops I could find and luckily found this camera here. I developed my first role in the photo club darkroom and pretty much never looked back. And now I have a ton of cameras and I have a camera collection and I'm even making a video about my camera collection online. So this kind of started it all. But in the last couple of years, I didn't really get to use it at all, but I at least borrowed it to a friend who had it for like one or even two years and shot with it so I think it's fair to at least give it one out of five film rolls. And coming next we probably have my favorite category which is rangefinder cameras. But before we dive into that, I actually have an announcement to make. Because this is my three year anniversary video, I also wanted to share something special with you and something that I've been working on on the past couple of months. And that is that I am starting a Patreon. In fact, I have already started a Patreon because the page is up now, but I have filled it with a lot of content over the course of the last months already so that you have a huge kind of backlog of things that you can digest. So on my Patreon page, you will find commentaries, but also behind the scenes information accompanying my YouTube videos. You will find dedicated videos only for my Patreons. I also recorded a couple of podcast episodes. You will see images that I otherwise haven't uploaded anywhere else but also an exclusive glance in my personal life but also the regular kind of tips and tricks when it comes to photography and on top of that I will also host like regular online hangout sessions for us film nerds to connect in person as well 
and Patreon will also be a great way in case you are interested to receive physical mail from me as for example postcards or Instax images. So in case this is something interesting for you, your support over on Patreon will help me to sustain this channel in the long run, so it's really, really appreciated. But since we are talking about nerdy stuff already, let's jump back to our cameras. So this is probably the heart of my camera collection. This is the infamous Leica M6 that I feel I don't really need to say a lot about because I feel that there's not an individual film shooter out there who hasn't heard about the Leica M6. And this one I got uh, used in a camera store in the city where I live back in 2019 and this camera also holds a rather personal kind of value for me because it's connected to a close family member of mine that passed away. I got this one in the titanium version with the 0.72 viewfinder magnification and it's the classic and not the TTL one and just recently I also upgraded my lens to the Leica Summicron 35mm f2 and I have to say that this camera truly feels like the extension of my body. This is the camera that I can use blindfoldedly, that I build up so much muscle memory over time, that I feel kind of naked when I leave the house without it. So this camera, without a doubt, kind of receives a thousand film rolls out of five, because this is also the reason why I'm neglecting so many of my other cameras for my collection. And next is actually one of the latest additions to the collection, which is this one here, the Contax G1 with the Carl Zeiss 45mm Planar lens. And to be honest, I only got this camera because I found it for an incredible deal. I was just randomly looking through eBay Marketplace here locally and I found this camera and the seller told me that he's getting bombarded with messages because he put it in for probably like one third of the current market price. And in the end, I got the deal because I was the only person who could come there straight away to pick it up. And to be fair, I actually told the seller that I think that he's selling it for way too little. And he told me that he knows, but that he doesn't care because money isn't really an issue for him. And when I went to his house, I definitely understood why. So initially I only got this camera because I got it for such a good deal. And to be honest, I was actually considering just using it for maybe half a year or a year and then selling it. But I made the huge mistake to actually shoot with it and put a, a roll through. And after that, I was instantly hooked and I knew that I actually want to keep this camera. And the context is my first um, autofocus camera with interchangeable lenses. So it's been a different experience shooting this with autofocus, but it's been really fun. And I especially like the user experience of this camera. It just feels so nice in your hands. And the rendition of the lens of the 45 millimeter is so insane. So instead of selling this camera, I'm actually considering to buy more lenses. And I've been thinking about getting the 28 millimeter maybe. So yeah, this is just the danger of film photography that instead of buying things to resell them you end up just owning them and keeping them it is how it is and even though I've only had this since I think December last year I shot quite a bit with it so I would give this 3.5 out of 5 film rolls and next up we have this camera here, which is the Hasselblad x pen which was probably the most crazy and irresponsible of me to buy. But I had uh, my eye on this camera for many years, but finally pulled the trigger when I found one a couple of hours from where I live for a rather good deal. In case you are not familiar with the Hasselblad x pen it's a 35mm panoramic camera, which means that the width of a panoramic image is almost double the size of a regular standard 35mm frame which makes it a rather unique camera because uh, it's one of the few cameras that's actually capable of this without cropping the frame without stitching something together and without the need of a rotating lens which makes this camera especially interesting for something like documentary or street photography which is also what I use it for most times besides the landscape or urban landscape image every now and then. Since the x pen is a little bit more on the heavier and bulkier side in comparison to something like my M6, on like more lightweight trips I still gravitate towards my M6 a little bit more, but still it's one of my most used cameras in my collection, so I would give this 4 out of 5 film rolls. Don't mind the cat, she's my assistant for the day, handing me all the cameras. So next are medium format cameras and we are starting with probably one of the most hated medium format cameras which is the Holger 120. And I just feel like you need to own a camera in order to make fun of the camera which is the only reason why I got it. 
know about Rogue Society, I actually found it on a marketplace site in the house next door, which was so funny that I simply had to buy it. And I also thought that the color is kind of funky. Um, yeah, so I just got it a couple of weeks ago, which means I didn't have the chance to shoot it yet. So for now, it's zero out of five film rolls. The next camera is rather special to me, and this is the Synchro de Ruch. This is the camera that my father used to shoot with as a child because he got this for his first communion and he actually gave it to me a couple of years ago. And I've been using this camera as some sort of family documentation camera, but also to create more abstract and surreal work because of the limited settings it has. But to be honest, I feel like it's almost a little bit underrated because it has beautiful bokeh and is sharper than expected while still having the kind of typical artifacts that you get from these plasticky box cameras. So for me, it's just a very great mixture and I actually use it a lot and have film loaded in here pretty much all the time. So I would give this probably four out of five film rolls. And up in line is this one here, which is the Siegel 4B camera, a TLR, meaning twin lens reflex camera, which was my entry to medium format photography. So this is actually a kind of Chinese clone of the German Rolleiflex cameras and therefore more on the affordable spectrum of cameras, which is also why I decided to get this for the beginning. To be fair, I haven't used it at all in the last years, which is kind of a bummer because it's a beautiful camera and very fun to shoot. So making this video is kind of a good reminder to take these cameras out as well. So for now, I have to give this zero out of five film rolls, but I'm working on changing that. This is probably my favorite medium format camera that you might have also spotted on my channel before, which is the Bronica ETR SI. This is a 645 interchangeable modular camera, which means that apart from the lens, you can also exchange the viewfinder, the focusing screen, the film bag, and a lot of other components to really configure this camera to your needs. I did not buy this camera, but I also got this in a camera exchange. So this is actually a great tip if you are considering to get a new camera or have something in your collection that you don't need anymore, uh, instead of kind of selling and buying things. Camera exchanges are a great way to kind of trade camera gear as well, so definitely something worth checking out. I mainly use the Bronica to take portraits, but last year I didn't take as many portraits as I wished, so I hope that I can do better this year. So sadly, I will only have to give this camera three out of five film rolls in, in terms of my usage, even though this camera easily deserves five. If you've been following this channel before, you might know that I made the leap into large format photography a while ago and I actually did so with this camera, the Chamonix N2. The Chamonix N2 is a beautiful 4x5 inch camera made out of teak wood and carbon fiber elements and is rather compact and rather lightweight for what it is and it's even foldable which makes it more compact and more easy to travel with. I would still consider myself to be a beginner when it comes to large format photography, but I fell absolutely in love with the process and also with the Chamonix because it's such a pleasure to use. But large format photography in general requires a little bit more time and effort and resources and it's simply not as spontaneous. So with kind of this in mind, I think I take it out quite regularly, so I would probably give this 4 out of 5 film rolls even though I probably have to say film sheets because it's a large format camera. And now to instant cameras and let's start with a classic here, the Polaroid SX70. The SX70 is a very unique classic camera from the 70s with this foldable design and the capabilities of manual focusing, which is very cool for an instant camera. And I actually got a couple of cool images from it with weird artifacts that you probably get if you don't take care of your rollers as I do. I really love the camera for the aesthetics of it. I think it's one of the most beautiful cameras ever made. And I also got a couple of cool images with it. But in recent times I felt like it is not as reliable anymore. Uh, the shutter got stuck on a couple of sheets, making them completely overexposed and unusable, which is kind of a waste of money if you take into account how expensive um, SX70 film is these days. So in recent times I haven't really been using it too much, so I can only give this two out of five film rolls. 
And next we have these two here, which are the Polaroid 635 and 636. And to be completely honest, I don't know why I ended up having two. And technically they are not even really mine, but they actually belong to my partner. But they ended up in my camera shelf. And after all these years, I just automatically assumed that they moved over to my possession. But basically these are just cool shelf pieces. We don't really get to use them a lot. We use them on uh, parties to hand them around to take selfies every now and then but nothing too major and also with the current prices for Polaroid 600 film where you pay 20 euros for eight shots it's a bit much so currently 0.5 out of 5 film rolls because I find the classic Polaroid film to be a little bit more on the expensive side and also because I think that the form factor of the frames is a bit too large for my taste, I actually looked into the Instax direction. I initially had my eye on the Instax square but accidentally found this one here, the Instax mini, which was listed for I think 15 euros including two packs of film. And pro tip here, this camera was listed for I think half a year and the reason for that is because the name of the camera camera was spelled incorrectly in the title. I think it said something like Instech or Intech, I'm not really sure. Uh, so nobody really found it and nobody could really see it. So I think this is a good tip to look for cameras you're looking and spell it incorrectly because sometimes there's people who just make an error or a typo and then they have like auctions that don't get much visibility. But I found this film format to be a little bit too small even, which is why in the end I decided to pull the trigger on the Instax Square. So the Instax Square is exactly what I was looking for. It's a really cool camera. I think it's extremely pretty. The images turn out really beautifully. I really love the colors. I don't experience weird issues as I'm experiencing with my vintage Polaroids and also the form factor of the film is perfect in my opinion. So I've been using this for a couple of occasions and I'm also using it for a little fun side project that I'm doing where I'm photographing all of the people who ever enter my space when they visit me because I just moved here like a year ago. So it's kind of fun to document all the people who uh, who I've met since living in the, in the new house. So I think, yeah, that's a fun camera for small projects like this as well. I would give the Instax Mini only one out of five stars but the square is getting some good use so four out of five I know, I know the video has been rather long already, but I think this is where the fun, juicy stuff starts. So let's kickstart the exotic camera category with this one here. This is the Petit Tuxi camera, which, you know, is probably the smallest camera I have in my collection. I know that this might look like a miniature toy camera, but it is not. <laughs> it is in fact a fully functional camera that shoots 16 mm film. I mean, just look at this shutter here. To be honest, I haven't messed around with 16mm film yet, so sadly it's 0 out of 5 film rolls, but I would definitely be interested to do so in the future. So if you have any tips on shooting and developing 16mm film, definitely leave a comment in the comment section down below. Staying in the lane of small cameras, next we have this one here. This is the Meopta Microma 2, another really tiny small camera that also shoots 16mm film. And in comparison to the Petit, this one actually feels very solid and very heavy and sturdy and is also fully functional. And in a way, this feels like a camera my cat would like to use. So sadly, also it's zero out of five film rolls, but definitely one of my favorite pieces of decoration. Unexpectedly, the next thing is probably the cheapest camera in my collection, which I got for one euro at a flea market, which is this one here. It's an Elmo Super 8 camera. And honestly, even though you don't shoot film and you might not like it, who sells this for one euro? Have I shot with this camera? No. Do I really want to shoot with this camera? Yes. So I think I will have to get over myself and get over the high developing prices for Super 8 and just do it one day. But for now, sadly, it's zero out of five Super 8 film canisters. And next we have this one here, the Canon MV790 camcorder style digital video digital. Oh, okay, forget it. I'm doing an analog camera collection and this is mini DV digital camera. Sometimes getting confused with high 8, super 8, mini DV. So yeah, still a cool camera though. And next we have das einzig wahre Warsteiner, which is 
a camera in the shape of a beer can, not to be confused with a beer can pinhole camera, which I also have. This one is more like a fun gimmicky toy that I found on a flea market one day and simply had to get it. Currently it's sitting, you know, in my camera cabinet for a good laugh and I didn't use it yet. And it also took me ages to figure out how to open it to get the film in. So yeah, I might bring it to the next occasion where it might be a good kind of conversation starter. So currently zero out of five film rolls. And last but not least, we have this camera here, which is the Lomo Constructor, which is a camera that you actually have to build yourself. Um, I got this for my birthday a couple of years ago and it was really, really fun building it. And it also came with some film, but I have to admit that I used the film for something else. So I haven't shot with this camera yet. So it's zero out of five film rolls, but definitely five bonus points for the fun of building this. So this was actually everything for today. And if you are still here, and if you are still watching, you deserve an applause because it was a really long video. And of course, I would also be interested to hear your thoughts. So please let me know which camera you maybe found the most interesting or the most surprising in my collection. And also if you expected how much I shoot and use each of these cameras. And please, please, please also tell me that I'm not insane, that I'm not crazy for owning this kind of collection, this amount of cameras. And that being said, I would say thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.